or if you need to leave early, etc. So welcome everyone to Meditation for Manifestation 2024. My name is Luke Salway. I'm a MCC certified ICF coach and NLP trainer and the only Dr. Joe certified uh, consultant based here in Asia. And so it's wonderful to join with you today to share. Today's session is going to be more about some of the theory and the practical applications of meditation. In other words, a bit more of the background on how meditation works and how it can help you. Um, from my understanding, I believe we've got all sorts of uh, people who are in different places on their meditation journey. I know that we've got some advanced meditators here on the call tonight. And I dare say we have some baby beginners as well. So wherever you are on your journey, I'm not going to teach you meditation tonight. I want to share and create a little bit more awareness about why it is in so important and how it can help you. Uh, and of course, your teams and your family and the people that you care about. So I am going to uh, share the slides and we're going to go through and I hope you enjoy uh, just while I'm doing that, tell us in the chat box, please, where are you logging in from today? What part of the world are you joining us today? Tell me in the chat box, please. And I'll push a magic button here. Yeah, yeah, and you can dance if you want to. <laughs> All right, so... I'm uh, very lucky and very blessed to have uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza as my mentor. Um, my journey with Dr. Joe started back in 2019, where I attended a very small retreat in Costa Rica, which was absolutely stunning. It was a small group of 100 people there for five days. And that was my very, very first time not only meeting Dr. Joe, but uh, the first time I had experienced his meditation styles and, of course, the theory behind it. So fast forward a year later, I read all of his books. Uh, I attended his week-long advanced retreat in Dubai, which was in early 2020. And then uh, together with my wife, Coach Christy, we flew over to the States. We did a three-week road trip cruising around in a Wrangler Jeep to eventually arrive at Palm Springs, I think it was, where we did our Train the Trainer program uh, direct with Dr. Joe for five days. And so as a Dr. Joe consultant, I'm the only certified consultant of his work. Uh, of course, Dr. Joe does his week-long programs all around the world, mostly in the US uh, and Mexico right now. Uh, and I'm certified to teach his two-day program, especially for leaders and organizations and anyone interested to learn these uh, techniques, especially on the how to do the meditation. I'll talk more about that a little bit later. Suffice to say, what I'm sharing with you today is a combination of uh, my learnings from Dr. Joe, uh, but also other learnings from, you know, Esther Hicks and from Caroline Meese and any other uh, learnings that I've had along the way, kind of incorporated them in here in a more practical, easy to apply methodology for everyone on the call today. So, uh Let's get really, really clear on uh, some definitions right now, or well, certainly my interpretation of the definitions, and feel free to drop your interpretation of these definitions in the chat box as well. So to manifest, what does that mean? It means readily perceived by the senses and especially by the senses of sight. So one definition of manifest is what we see. Now, this is from Google, right? So it must be true. And of course, it is also open to interpretation. Uh, another definition I found on Google is to make evident or certain by showing or displaying. So again, it's about something that you see. And uh, those who know me know that I like simple English. So my kind of summarization is... To manifest or the act of manifestation is to create or to become visible. So we talk about manifestation a lot by taking our thoughts, our wishes and desires, all of which we cannot see. And to take those thoughts and visions and dreams and goals and desires and to bring it into our physical reality so we can see it and hear it and touch it. 
So in other words, to create and to be able to see the effects in your life. Now, again, if you have an alternate uh, description or definition, please share it into the chat box. Now, do our thoughts create our reality, guys? Tell me, yes or no? Tell me quickly in the chat box or nod your head. Do our thoughts create our reality, yay or nay? Looks like we've got lots of yeses there. Yes, yes, yay, yay, yes, yes, yay. Awesome. So for the skeptics, and I love showing this slide when I do corporate leadership programs with executives who are, you know, numbers, numbers, sell, sell, leadership, leadership. Well, let's follow this simple diagram. We have our thoughts and neuroscience tells us we have about 60,000 thoughts per day. Those thoughts lead to the decisions that we make on a daily basis. We decide this, we decide that, and what, what those decisions lead to is then some form of action. And did you know that our actions that we take in our life create the results in our life? And what are our results? Your results are the reality that you see around you. So for example, let's take someone who's working in a, in a company. At one point in time, they thought to themselves, I want to work for that company. They were thinking about it and they were thinking about it and maybe they even did some research and then they made a decision. I want to work for that company. They decided. So they took some actions. They updated their resume. They updated their CV. They sent in the application. They applied for the job, right? Then they had to go for the interview. So that's still part of the action process. Uh, and then they got the job offer and they accepted the job. They created the result of achieving that job. So now on Monday morning, as they're sitting in their little office and they're looking around, them working in that job as they look at the office and the desk and their coworker and their boss, that is their reality. So yes, our thoughts do create our reality through this simple process of the thoughts that we have lead to decisions actions and the results in our life. Same with your partner, same where you go for your holiday destinations or the car that you buy or the house that you buy, all of that follows this same process. So far, so good? Excellent. Now with that in mind, let's also get clear on the definition of meditate or meditation. To think, and, and again, it's from Google, so it must be very, very true. Let me just move my doodah here. To think deeply or focus one's mind for a period of time in silence or with the aid of chanting or a mantra or music or a guided meditation for religious spiritual purposes or as a method for relaxation. That's one definition. Second definition, <clears throat> think deeply or carefully about something. Hmm, I might meditate on that. Yeah. Now, according to Dr. Joe, and this is in the two-day program that I'm certified to teach, in that he mentions that from the Greek philosophy, uh, meditation or to meditate is to know thyself. Uh, in the Tibetan language, to meditate means to become familiar with. So based on those two definitions, and again, to help simplify things, I like to think that that is to simply create awareness. So meditation is the process of becoming more aware of myself, of, my, of those thoughts, decisions, and actions, and how we can see those chain of events from thought to my reality, as we begin to become aware and look at the, the mechanics, if you like, of that process, then with that improved awareness, we're able to make new, more informed decisions to achieve the goals and the dreams that we want to achieve in our life. Moving on, uh, according to the Sanskrit language is to cultivate thyself like we would do in the garden, right? We cultivate, we nurture, we take care, we fertilize and we water ourselves, right? So to improve ourselves, to take care of ourselves. And according to kind of Western thinking is to contemplate, to plan, to focus or to practice. 
Now, again, if we take those last two there, you can really think about that as creation, right? To when we think about cultivating the self, it's to create that new version of yourself, to develop and improve that version of yourself, right? Or to create those goals that you want to achieve, whether it's a business goal or relationship goal or a financial goal, whatever it is, you have the opportunity to create. So in very, very simple terms, to meditate is to create awareness in order that we can create what we want, not what we don't want. So far, so good? Cool, cool. Now, as we go, guys, uh, and you do have any questions, please do drop them into the chat box. I'll check the chat box every now and then. I don't know if it's my uh, technology wizardry or lack of. I can't seem to share the screen and see the chat box at the same time. So I'll be flicking between the two. Now, did you know there are three steps to meditation? Oh, sorry. Let me rephrase that. Three steps to manifestation. So when we think about manifesting, we also think about creating, right? To bring something into the visible world, to take something from the intangible into our 3D reality. Now, these three steps to manifesting here that I'm about to share, these are based on my personal experience. Step number one is relax. That's right. We need to chill out. And we need to be able to relax. And don't worry, I will explain uh, what I'm talking about here in a moment. Uh, many of us, I was in the trap of having to go, 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 do, 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 rush, 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 work, 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 uh, in order to create what I wanted to create. Mm, eh, I don't know. Maybe when you're younger, you can get away with it. But when you get to my age... <clears throat> Uh, you, you can't work 16 hour days anymore. It's just not fun anymore. So step number one is to relax. Step number two is to have that clear intention. And I'm talking really, really clear. And don't worry, we'll go into each of these steps and explain them in a lot more detail. And the third one is to surrender to the process, to trust the process that that which you desire will come to you at the appropriate time. So let's take a look on these three steps here to make it really, really easy to manifest whatever you want in 2024. Now, Dr. Joe tells us that we cannot create a new future by holding on to the emotions of the past. In other words, if you had a stressful life at some point in your life, whether it was some kind of trauma or whether it was some kind of illness or even if it was just working really, really hard, you know, in your 30s and 40s, chances are there is some element of stress in your past. And if we hold on to those emotions of stress, but not just the emotions. If we continue to do those same things, to have those same thoughts, to make those same decisions, to take those same actions, well, the result is going to be more stress. So in other words, if we want to create a new future, step number one is we must reduce our stress, right? So Dr. Joe talks about survival being in this survival mode. And the analogy that he uses is that many thousands of years ago, when we were cave men and women, 20,000 years ago, uh, we needed to survive, right? We needed to hunt food and gather plants and we needed to be uh, aware of the saber-toothed tiger outside of the cave. So we're kind of always in this survival mode. And we're actually wired to be able to deal with stress in short periods of time. And we can call that the flight or flight mechanism where we have to fight or we, we flight, we run away. Um, but nature did not intend us to live in those high hormones of stress for a long period of time. Now, sadly, 90% of all doctor's visits are stress related. Right. Think of high blood pressure. Think of tumors. Think of cancers and things like that. A lot of those have their foundation in stress, whether it's mental, physical or emotional. Stress is the foundation of most illnesses and disease. 
Now, if we are literally fighting for survival, which of course is not a saber-toothed tiger right now, it could be a mother-in-law or, or a father-in-law. I, I, I want to keep it balanced here. It could be a co-worker. You know that co-worker that sits on the other side of the office and they just stare daggers at you through the day? It could be that person that triggers you. Or it could be your boss. Or it could be the traffic. Or it could be a hundred different things that stress you out, which trigger all of these emotions and these chemicals in the body to make it feel like you're trying to survive. Now, here's the thing. When you are in that survival mode, it is not the time to create, right? Let me say that again. When you are in high levels of stress and therefore the survival zone, it is not the time to create. It is not the time to daydream and manifest uh, your true, true desire because you can't get in touch with it, right? And there's a whole lot of physiological other things that are going on where we're in these high hormones of stress. So that's why we say to manifest anything you want, you first must learn to de-stress, right? We must learn to relax. So we need to move from those survival states to these creation states. And we need to learn how to relax. And there are going to be some barriers and obstacles here that will prevent you from relaxing, that are going to make it more difficult for you to relax, to engage that creative process. So based on my observations and experiences, here's what they are. And by the way, if you do have some suggestions, now's a good time to put them into the chat box. Obviously, stress, and I'm talking any type of stress here, stress in the relationship, financial stress, stress with the career, stress with people, physical stress, emotional stress, trauma, stress from the past, your environment, right, especially your working environment or where you move your body through space and time, the, the city in which you live in, that could cause you unnecessary stress. Right. So as a simple example here, when we do meditate, uh, we need to find the right space to be able to meditate. We can't have kids or dogs or puppies or kittens or whatever running around and horns blaring. It's going to make your <laughs> process of meditation and manifestation very, very difficult. Um, the other thing that prevents us or is a barrier to relax, relaxing is too much focus on the negative. Too much focus on what we don't have. Too much focus on the lack or the things that are not working in our life. And, and this is just part of human nature, unfortunately, uh, until we learn the tools to be able to shift our focus uh, on something else. Now, the other area that creates a lot of stress is when we focus on things that are outside of our control, which most of them happen to be negative. So this is what's going to prevent you from really, really relaxing. Now, if you have any other suggestions or, or experiences, what else prevents you from relaxing, please go ahead and share it into the chat box now. Uh, I, I'm sure we'd all like to learn. Now, here are some suggestions on how to overcome them, right? I, I share these barriers and obstacles for the simple process of creating awareness, right? And that's why I want you to add some more into the chat box to create awareness for everyone in the group. Now, again, awareness is your superpower. When you are aware of these obstacles and barriers, with that awareness alone, you now have an opportunity to overcome it. Because before, without awareness, it's kind of like you did not know that you did not know, right? It was just outside of your awareness. And we just kind of say to ourselves, huh, that's just the way it is. Huh, there's nothing I can do about it. Huh, it's always been like this. Oh, gee, I can't change my environment or I can't change my situation. All of those statements are not true right? That's a little bit like a victim mentality. And what I want you to know is that you are in charge of your thoughts. You are therefore in charge of your decisions and your actions. Only you 
can manifest and create the future that you want and deserve. So begin to pay attention to what you repeatedly tell yourself. And just be aware that that might be a barrier or an obstacle that's holding you back. Yeah, overall, the mindset, absolutely. Thank you, Howard. Now, this is how we can overcome these obstacles. Really, really simple. Try some conscious breathing. What works really, really well for me is 15 deep breaths. Now, I'm not talking like... <clears throat> Like, like a super, super deep breath so you pass out and fall out. Uh, no, you take five breaths for your body. Then you take five breaths for your mind and you'll literally notice the chatter in your mind begin to decrease with five conscious breaths. So again, the first five is just for the body. Just relax the body. And, and while I'm talking now, you can even try it if you like. Uh, the first five are to relax the body. The second five are to uh, relax that internal chatter. And then the final five is just enjoy the bliss, right? Just enjoy those elevated emotions. And I know any of you that know Dr. Joe's work to truly manifest and create what we want, we need to uh, tap into those elevated emotions of peace, of joy, of love, of connection, of confidence, whatever it is for you that's an elevated emotion, that's what you do in those final five breaths. So don't take my word for it. Give it a shot uh, because you can do it anywhere. You can do it in the line at the bank. You can do it on the public transport from here to there. You can do it in the car when you're driving. You can do it absolutely wherever you like, easily and effortlessly, and no one needs to know. Right. Any form of yoga, bendy, stretchy, you know, moving the body around is a really, really good way to get the body out of stress. And when you get the body out of stress, the mind will inevitably follow you. It will feel good that you're moving the body. Next one, play. Do what brings you joy, whether it's playing with a puppy. We just got a beagle puppy about two months ago. He's not a puppy anymore. He's a teenager who likes to chew everything. Um, and he still brings us joy, right? So do whatever you need to do that brings you joy. One of my favorite things to do in the world, I love to go to the Japanese onsen here in Bangkok. Uh, it's 10 minutes from my house. And I just love, 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 love to go down there. It's my me time. It's my self-care time. It's my time to chill out and relax. Uh, so do whatever brings you joy. Coming up with some new choices, right? When we talk about these barriers and these old emotions that keep us stuck, uh, we need to come up with some new choices. And what you'll see is when you come up with some new choices, right, some new actions and some new results, that will put a spring in your step because now you've got outside of your comfort zone and, and you, you get out of those, the, the stuckness of those old emotions and those old stresses and those old triggers. So new choices leads, it, it's like a fork in the road. If we keep doing the same thing, we'll keep getting the exact same result. So at some point, we must find the courage to do something new, to take that step out of the comfort zone, to connect with a new group of people, to you know, find something that's going to uplift and inspire you as opposed to the same old, same old. And the final one here is meditation, right? So we did talk about uh, how your meditation will help you to create your manifestation and things that you want to achieve. Now, when I'm talking about meditation here, I'm not necessarily talking about uh, mystical experiences and floating through the cosmos and having conversations with the Dalai Lama uh, from 18 generations ago. That's not the kind of meditation that I'm talking about at this stage. I'm talking really simple meditation. I'm talking 15 minutes, a little bit of music in the background, just giving yourself the emotional permission to sit quietly and do nothing except your meditation. And again, meditation is a very personal process. So whether you use music 
or a guided meditation, whether you sit up or lay down, whether you do it in the morning or the evening, that's up to you at this point. Do whatever works for you. Um, and, uh, and then that is one of the quickest ways to bring you out of those hormones of stress, to bring you out of the survival mode, uh, to just be present, right? To be in the present moment. And now you're, you're at the cusp, you're at the very edge of starting to manifest what you truly, truly want. When we're in survival mode, it's really, really difficult. And now you're in this 3D world, go, 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 push, push, push. It's not sustainable. Cool, cool. So this is what we mean by relax. Excellent. Any questions? Drop them in the chat box. Energy flows where intention grow, goes. So number two in the three steps for manifestation is to have a clear intention. So an intention is kind of like a goal. I mean, it's very, very similar to a goal. It's maybe just not as precise, you might say. Now, what do I mean by precise is I'm sure most of you have heard about SMART goals. Yeah, we use them in leadership. We use them in goal setting. Uh, coaches use them all the time. Uh, and they're very, very useful and very, very important and relevant. Um, and I, I would invite you to explore this process of clear intention setting, which is gen generally a little bit more vague or a little bit more general. Now, when I say vague, I, I don't want you to interpret that as being like, like, like nothing or, or really, really kind of loose. Think about it as maybe not having a time frame on your goal. Think about an intention as being open to receiving even more from the universe that you could ever, ever imagine. Think that there's something even bigger and better waiting for you that you perhaps cannot envision yet, yet the universe in its infinite wisdom, however it works, knows that you do deserve better because the universe will respond to your frequency or your energy, whatever you're putting out there will come back to you. So when you have that kind of the clear intention, but not like rock solid, if that makes sense, then it becomes a very, very magical game to play. And you can be pleasantly surprised uh, by what you're able to manifest and create. So it really starts by focusing on what you want. Now, again, there are going to be some barriers and obstacles that hold you back. And this is probably one of the biggest ones. When we talk about setting clear intentions, one of the biggest obstacles is actually too much focusing on what you don't want or what you don't have, right? So, so let me explain this a little bit because it's really, really important. Let's take the example of someone who is having financial challenges. A lot of their energy and focus goes to what they don't have and what they don't want. Now, the universe is, is quite interesting in terms of mechanics. And the universe, and I'll call it the universe, you, you might have a different interpretation of what that is, the creator, Buddha, Muhammad, whatever your interpretation is, cool. When I say the universe, I'm talking about the creator of this beautiful existence that we have right now so the universe responds to frequency and when we focus on what we don't want we're actually focusing on the not having or the things that we don't want now the universe doesn't know right or wrong good or bad or even actually past and future it only knows right now so for example do this exercise with me here listen to this very carefully don't Think of a pink elephant. Uh, 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 no, no, I said don't think of a pink elephant, right? So when we say I don't want this and I don't want that and we keep focusing on that thing that we don't want or that thing that we don't have enough of, the universe doesn't know. It's only following your focus. 
So we need to be able to flip that to be able to focus on what we want, which we'll come to in a second. But just let me guarantee you here that whatever you focus on, you will attract. So please be careful not to focus on what you don't want or what you don't have. Next one, the obstacles to a clear intention is a lack of clarity. So you heard me say before that, yeah, a clear intention is like a goal, but it doesn't need to be exact and precise like a smart goal. You can be a little bit general. You can be a little bit open-ended with it, and you still need to have clarity about what it is that you want, right? So, so for example, if you're considering to buy a house, for example, and you're thinking, do I want a condo, right? A nice high-rise condo, or do I want like a house, house, something on a plot of land where, you know, you've got a little backyard for the, for the kids or the dog or whatever. And you're kind of like, yeah, that one would be nice. Or mm, yeah, that's pretty nice. And oh yeah, but what about that one? Well, now with the flipping and the flopping and the twisting and the turning, now we're sending out mixed messages to the universe and the universe does not know what to give you. It's the same with a job, right? You're thinking about a career, maybe in two very different industries. For example, mm, should I take job A or mm, should I take job B? Mm, mm, mm. Now, of course, there is a process, a conscious process that you can go through to help create that clarity. But just know that if you don't get to that level of clarity, it will be much more slower or much more difficult to manifest what you actually want. So you do need some clarity in your intention and your intention is for whatever you want, whether it's health or relationship, a career, finances, where you want to live. All of those can be clear intentions that you can set. Oh, this is a big one too. Another barrier and obstacle that's going to hold you back is when you spend too much money, money, <laughs> When you spend too much time people pleasing, right? So, you, you know, and, and this is often a program that's uh, that we adopt as children. We learn it from our environment. We want to please people all the time. We want to make sure that they're happy. And that's good. At its fundamental, that's a nice quality to have as a human being. And you need to make sure that your own glass is full before you can give to other people. So in other words, if you're pleasing all of these other people all of the time, many of which are taking advantage of you, then your glass is now empty. And you simply do not have that the energy or the power or the focus to be able to manifest and create what you want. All right. So, you know, we need to know our own boundaries. We need to know when to say no. And we need to know when to put ourselves first. And you can do that in a very respectful way. Just know in the very, very beginning, it might not be easy because other people have been taking advantage of you for so many years. That's going to slow you down. Please tell me what else? What else might be a barrier? Uh, to setting clear intentions. Please tell me in the chat box. Uh, okay, while well, you guys are thinking of some other distractions, thank you, Glenda. Hi, sir. What do we do if we're meditating there and then there is a sudden mental distraction? Uh, by the way, for the meditators in the group, who's ever had a sudden mental distraction before? Who's had many sudden mental distractions before? Yeah, happens to me every day. Uh, and all you need to do is when you have that distraction, you just gently come back to your meditation. Whatever form of meditation that was, whether it's a guided meditation or a silent meditation or a mantra or whatever, just acknowledge the thought, let it go like a cloud in the sky and just come back to your practice. That's all you need to do. Don't fight it. Don't feel guilty about it. You're doing okay. And just know that it's going to happen. In fact, I, I must share this pearl of wisdom to you that came from my uh, TM Transcendental Meditation teacher. As part of the theory of the meditation, he said, Luke, 
thoughts are okay, right? It, it's not to actually try to stop the thoughts, which you may have heard out there. Those thoughts that are coming up in your mind during a meditation practice, that is your body releasing stress. So as those thoughts pop up, I, I just imagine it's like a bubble in the water. <laughs> And, and it's just popping to the surface and then it's gone. So that's why you just gently come back to your meditation practice. Let the thought go. Do not hold on to it. Do not analyze it. Just let it go and come back to your practice, knowing that the thought, it's simply releasing stress from your body. Remember, relax, step number one. So you're absolutely doing the right thing. The, the point here is do not fight it and do not get attached to it. Let it go. Let it go on its way like a cloud in the sky and come back to your practice. Okay, so I think we had some answers here to what else prevents us uh, to be with negative thinking people. Yeah, guys, and this is part of environment too, like we talked about on step number one. Uh, people right? Whether they're friends or people who are negative, you might need to do a detox with the people that you hang out with because they're either going to cause stress in your environment or they're, you know, they're, they're just clouding your own thought process and, and inhibiting your ability to get clear. Um, can you explain the difference between observing the thoughts and knowing that negative thoughts come up? is cause of mindset programming. It is also being aware or judgment of myself because when people said don't judge, just observed. Yeah, guys, uh, first of all, thanks for the great question. You are going to have all kinds of thoughts uh, pop up during your meditation. There'll be negative self thoughts. There'll be judgmental thoughts about that douchebag or that <laughs> person. And, and it's all going to happen. And all I invite you to do is get back on the horse, right? And, and just keep riding that horse, right? Again, Dr. Joe talks about a, a beautiful analogy in his workshops. Dr. Joe travels all around the world. He has a, a farm, a ranch somewhere in the US. And he has a big stallion horse, big male horse. <laughs> and after Dr. Joe's been traveling for three months, he, he comes back and he wants to ride the horse. And when he first sits on the horse, that big stallion, it's bucking and it's like, and it's kicking and it's throwing and it wants to throw him off. After about 10 minutes though, the horse realizes that Dr. Joe is the boss. And in a moment, we'll just go. And the horse just surrenders. Our mind is exactly the same. Our mind is like a wild, untamed horse. And all we need to do, because it will kick and it will scream and it will say, oh, I'm uncomfortable. Oh, I've got a cramp. Oh, I need to get up. Oh, what about that meeting I've got? It's going to be very creatively coming up with ways to distract you from your meditation practice because it's very familiar and comfortable with your past programming, including those negative emotions and those traumas and those bad decisions we've made and all of that. That's comfortable for the unconscious mind. It's comfortable for that 95% of us that is unconscious at any given moment. So we just need to get back on the horse and we just need to ride it out, knowing that you are the master, right? And of course it takes practice, but more than anything, it just takes a little bit of discipline. And I encourage you, if you can set aside just 15 minutes a day, uh, at the beginning, especially if you're baby beginner meditators, right? If you're just starting out, do not try to sit for two hours in a meditation. You'll drive yourself crazy and, and you won't get a good result. In fact, you'll be you'll be so negative about the process that it'll unlikely, sorry, it will be likely to put you off from doing it again. So please walk before you run, uh, acknowledge the thoughts and then just let them go. Right, And if you keep doing that with consistency, just like Dr. Joe's horse, one day it's just going to surrender. And it says, okay, master, what do you want me to do? That's what the mind is going to like say to you. I hope that uh, helps. Ah, so if you can't visualize, just imagine if you could. 
right? I know you can't visualize, but just imagine if you could. Or have you? can you remember a dream that you've had in the past? I think most people can remember a dream. So there is a visualization process there. But here's the thing. You do not have to see it. Guys, when I visualize, I, I'm not seeing pictures and rainbows and colors and clear definitions of things. It's more of a sense that I have, right? I, I can imagine this, uh, this beautiful thing that I'm wanting to create in my life. So I can imagine it, not necessarily visualize it, but I can imagine it. And then I do my best to bring up those elevated emotions to be able to feel what it would feel like having manifested that which I desire. Uh, yeah, constant anticipation of the future. So you know what we also call that is, is anxiety. And, and I can share with you, you know, uh, I used to be addicted to the emotion called anxiety. So Dr. Joe talks about emotional addiction. We don't have enough time to go into that tonight. Just know that it's a thing. And I was addicted to this emotion called anxiety. So anxiety is focusing on what might go wrong in the future. And so we're always trying to anticipate, oh, but what if, or what if this happens? And what if this happens? And what if this happens? So in other words, we're focusing on what we don't want. So anxiety is a message from your unconscious mind to actually focus on what you want. In other words, when we're feeling anxiety, it means we're focusing on what we don't want. So we need to catch ourselves in that moment and then shift our focus to what we do want. Uh, if you cannot visualize your pineal gland, yeah, I have not met my pineal gland yet and I've been meditating for four years. One day, I'm not attached to that outcome anymore. I assume it's in there somewhere. So I'm just going to keep getting back on the horse and back on the horse. And when it's ready, it'll be ready. Share some idea how to maintain the state throughout the day while running some errands. Yes, we'll get to that um, in a moment there. All right, let, let me keep moving. Uh, overcoming some of these obstacles might answer some of these questions, actually. So... Again, we're still on clear intention, which is like that focusing on the thing that you want. And, and this is when I said about having a lack of clarity. Let me find my little doodah here. Right, so you remember I said lack of clarity, but an intention is not necessarily like a smart goal, but it is focusing on what you want. It's like a goal, but not like so rigid like. So what I recommend is to help you to set a clear intention Buddy up with your partner. Buddy up with a trusted friend. Uh, find yourself a coach or a mentor. Uh, join a meditation group or whatever. And I want you to consciously talk out loud and explore those intentions that you want. For example, and I, I don't think my wife minds me sharing at the moment. She's upstairs unless she's logged in listening somewhere. Anyway. My wife, Christy, and I, very recently, we had decided we want to move condos. We're, FYI, we're right here in the middle of Bangkok, living on Sukhumvit Road, uh, which is right near Terminal 21, right in the center of town. Nice condo, big condo. We've been here for about five years. Recently, we agreed that we wanted to have a change, right, to get out of the comfort zone a little bit and have a slightly different style. So we started to focus on having, uh, you know, we wrote, we wrote a list of the things that we wanted in a condo. So for me, a high floor, like 25 stories up or higher. So I, I didn't say the 35th floor, I just said 25 plus. So I wanted it to be nice. And I love that, you know, looking out over the city kind of vibe, that feeling, you know, 200 square meters, two or three bedrooms. I want an office. She wants an office. It had to be pet friendly because we have uh, three cats, two birds, and one dog. Uh, and, 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 right? So we made this nice list. We had a budget. And then we started to focus on that. We started to get a little bit of clarity around that. We even spoke with a couple of real estate agents and so on. Then at the very end of last year, we have a little bungalow down in the jungle here, about three hours south of Bangkok. 
And as we were relaxing down there, the first week, we did nothing. We relaxed, we ate, we swam in the river, we played with the dogs, we played with the cats, we had siestas, we wake up, we have a siesta again, we were watching Netflix, and we were just, we just did nothing. We just uh, surrendered to the art of being without having to do anything. And then Christy says, what about a house with our own land so that the dog can run around and, you know, and I thought, huh, that's interesting. Let's take a look at some. So we found some houses in at Huahin. We found a uh, real estate agent. And then we went around and we looked at four different kind of homey, villary kind of things in Huahin. And again, we made a bit of a checklist of what we wanted. We wanted this size of the land, this size of the house, this certain budget, should have a nice view, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, how do you know what you want? What is one good signal, guys, that gives you a clue of what your intention could be, right? Does anyone know, right? What could be the message that you get from yourself to know where, where should I put my focus? Because remember, if you're focusing or trying to focus on too many things, you're dispersing your energy and it's not enough to magically manifest what you want. So how do you know? I'm just checking the chat box. Yeah, who said that? Uh, yes, Debbie. And yes, Mabel. It's how you feel about it, right? So we went into one of these villas in Hui Hin and we just went, oh, that feels pretty good. That feels pretty good. And so now, because we were exploring the possibilities, we did not rush into the process, right? We explored the possibilities. What about, a and you know what? We've had enough of Bangkok. I love Bangkok. We'll still come to Bangkok to do our workshops and our trainings. Uh, but in terms of living here now, it, it, that box has already been ticked. So now we have a very, very clear intention uh, about where we want to live. And so now we're in the process of getting really, really clear on our wish list, right? Not too specific, but kind of, you know, specific enough so that we know when we tick those boxes, we'll be like, oh yeah, this is exactly what we wanted, right? And, and so it's a fun game to play. So my, my suggestion here is don't rush into it too much. I want you to consciously think about it, chat with someone else who has a different perspective to you and really explore those different intentions about what you want to achieve in your life. And again, whether it's a relationship or finances or whatever, talk about it with someone to create that extra clarity so that as you now set your clear intention, the universe will conspire to create it for you. Cool? Yeah, something feels right. Uh, yeah, cool, cool, cool. Awesome. All right. So let's keep going. How else do we overcome these barriers and obstacles. Knowing your purpose or your why. So when you know why you do what you do, when you know your purpose for your existence, then that can help you to, number one, identify your intention if you're not quite sure, or it can multiply or magnify your intention, right? So when you know what you want, and then you know why you want it, you are now doubling or even double some more the, the frequency and the intention that you send out into the universe when you know why you want it or for what purpose you want it. And, and that's going to be unique for everyone, right? What my purpose or my why is, is going to be very, very different to you and him and her. So again, it, it, you need to be patient and you need to explore it. Again, clarity uh, and to focus on what you want, not what you don't want, right? If, if, you, if you focus on what you don't want, then you're going to attract more of what you don't want. For example, in relationships, oh, I don't want a douchebag. Uh, I don't want this. I don't want that. Well, all you're sending out is what you're focusing on. Those qualities that you don't want is exactly what's going to show up. 
that's when we hear that you know people attract the same as their ex and the ex before that the one that abused them or the one that was a a loser for lack of a better word or the one that you know didn't treat them right or the ones that took advantage or the ones that were narcissistic we're simply repeating the same old pattern right chances are because we're focusing on how bad they were and how we do not want to have that again so let me give you one quick uh additional tool here guys and this is really good for relationships by the way this is how I attracted uh, Christy, my wife. We've been happily married now for about five years. We're business partners here at Coachology. She is the woman of my dreams. And it started with a piece of paper and I wrote a list of the qualities that I wanted in my partner. Now, again, I did not get super specific. You know, 170 centimetres tall, brown eye, blue brown eyes, gray hair, like, no, I didn't get into any specifics like that. I was more focused on the qualities, right? So for example, for the qualities, I wanted, you know, that she had a, like a business mindset. I had a quality that she was passionate about life. I was uh, a quality that she had a growth mindset and so on and so on. And I had a, I had a list. It was a little list, just like this, maybe five to 10 things written on it. And I would, I wrote the list first and then I would read that list every day and I'd read it every day and I'll read it every day. And I did that for two or three weeks. And then as happens, life got in the way. What was actually happening was I surrendered to the process. Lo and behold, I met Christy at the gym where I was a member. She was working there. I met her uh, the owner of the gym was playing Cupid and he kind of was nudging me, which was all a gift from the universe. And then we started dating and things were going pretty good. And maybe six months later, I just looked over her. We were sitting in the room and I went, I said, oh my goodness. She said, what? And I said, don't move. And I went over to my wallet. I still had the list in my wallet six months later. I opened up my list. It was wrinkly and crinkly. And I read the first quality. Tick. Second one. Tick. 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 And I was like, hmm. I thought, do, do I do I tell her this? Is this is this weird? Is she? Am I going to be some kind of weirdo in her eyes? And anyway, we were had very very open communication. And I said, Christy, can I share something with you? And she said, yes. Uh, and then I shared her the list. Then she looks at me and she says. She walks over to a bookshelf. She took off this book from the top shelf. She opened the book and she pulled out this piece of paper. You know, those ancient scrolls that you kind of, you know, you reel them out like that. And it's like, and, and I kid you not, she had about a hundred items on her list. And so an hour later, I ticked off maybe 95% of the items on her list. So now it was weirdo and weirdo and, and we live heavily, happily ever after. So it absolutely works. Christy has done this with dozens of her coaching clients when she does uh, life coaching with them. Uh, and you can do it with relationships and partners. You can do it on houses and condos. You can do it on whatever you want to do it, right? So that's what I mean by here, clarity and focusing on what you want. That is a really good tip to do it. Now, look at this, lo and behold. I'm definitely going to go over uh, on time here, by the way. So log off if you need to. It'll be recorded. I'm just going to keep talking. Um, oh, my gosh, there it is again. Meditation can help you to create clarity on your intention. And or meditation can help you to magnify your intention. Because as you focus on that intention... And now you go into that deep, relaxed state. Remember, you're not in stress anymore. You're not in survival. You're in creation mode. You're holding that vision. And I'm not talking about clear pictures and everything. You're holding that intention of what you want to achieve. And then you start to bring up those positive emotions, those elevated emotions. I'm talking gratitude. I'm talking appreciation. And you're doing that within the meditation to magnify your intention. Cool, cool. Excellent. So number three is surrender. 
And this is probably one of the most difficult parts of the whole manifestation process. Why? Because we're all doers, aren't we? Don't you love to do stuff? You like to do, do, do and go, go, go? Well, that's good for creating in the three-dimensional world in which we live in. And you'll hear things like that from, you know, Tony Robbins and a lot of these more kind of old school gurus uh, take action and go, 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 go. And, and of course, action has a place. Like we have to take action, right? H hang on, let's practice this together. You ready? Close your eyes. Red Ferrari, red Ferrari, red Ferrari, red Ferrari. Ah, damn it. So no, we still need to take action at some point along the line and we need to surrender. We often need to get out of our own way. So one of the key parts here is to be open and to be worthy to receive that thing that you want to manifest in your life. Let me explain. The barriers and obstacles. Many of us, and I'm talking especially business owners and especially leaders, we're always trying to control the how, right? How is it going to happen? How is it going to happen? What do I need to do? How, 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 how? Guys, when we're talking about manifestation here, we're talking about the fifth dimension. We're talking about going into the quantum field and the void, which is a deeper conversation for another time. And, and we need to surrender and just trust that the universe will figure it out. So we have to let go of the how. And the other really, really big one is one of the biggest obstacles out of manifesting anything is that we have a limiting belief. So our belief systems is what we believe to be true. Belief systems are either empowering or disempowering or what we call limiting. They hold us back. And according to Tony Robbins, who is an amazing coach and mentor, one of the biggest limiting beliefs in most humans is that belief that I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy of success. I'm not worthy of joy. I'm not worthy of love. I'm not good enough to receive this. I'm not good enough to receive that. And limiting beliefs are unconscious. They're operating in the background. And most people are simply not aware of their limiting beliefs. Now, again, this is another conversation for a whole nother time. Uh, to learn about limiting beliefs, you want to study NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, or you want to work with a professional coach who's been trained to remove those unconscious beliefs. Uh, yes, you can do the same process by yourself, with yourself, via meditation. Just know that generally it takes a little bit longer. Uh, by working with a coach or a mentor, they can help accelerate the process for you. Resistance conscious and unconscious. So similar to limiting beliefs, we have a lot of resistance. We resist and a lot of it is fear-based, right? Some people are afraid of failure, so they won't even try. Other people are afraid of success, and so they won't even try. And there's literally a dozen different fears that hold people back. They get themselves in the way as an obstacle uh, to prevent them from manifesting what they want. Any other suggestions, please write them in there. Now, the best way to overcome these obstacles is to trust the process, right? It's not your job to know how things are going to unfold. It's not your job, right? Once you're able to relax, once you get that clear intention and you back it up with some elevated emotion, then you just need to get out of the way, right? And it, it's not going to work on your timeline. It might happen quicker, it might happen like longer, or it might happen exactly when you think it was going to happen, but I need you to be flexible here. Because as soon as you start saying things like, where is it? Why hasn't it happened yet? What's going on? This is taking too long. Guess what? You're now focusing on what you don't want. And you're now sending mixed messages into the universe and it's going to take even longer, right? So just trust the process. Just surrender and get out of your own way, which is why I encourage you to take a little bit more time to get really, really clear on your intentions. And if you can, work with a coach or someone to help you to remove those limiting beliefs. Because all the work in the world 
might be for nothing if you have this core limiting belief that I don't deserve love or I don't deserve success, right? Now, the meditation process can help you become aware of those limiting beliefs. And then, of course, you need to transform them into empowering beliefs. Um, okay, good question. Can I assume the surrender means act as acting like a person that already got the desire? Yes, you can, right? So we need to believe that that which we intend to achieve, we need to believe that it's already happened. Now, a quick word of caution there, not with arrogance. Now, I know that might sound obvious to many of you, but if you walk around like, I'm a billionaire, I'm a billionaire, I'm a billionaire, oh, yes, I am, and you're, you're running up your credit card debt and you've got $10 in the bank, the universe is going to call your bluff and it knows you're bullshitting. Because at some deep level, you don't believe that you're a billionaire. Uh, so, you know, you need to kind of keep it in balance here. But one thing is for sure, and that comes to the next part here, I think, the next point, gratitude and appreciation. All right? So acting as if you already have it, just bring in the gratitude and the appreciation as if you already have it right? You're so grateful that you have already achieved it in its own time, right? In its own time. And, and that's going to be the tricky part because when do you want it? You want it yesterday. I know. Me too sometimes. I want it yesterday. I want this house in Hua Hin last week. Yen Yen, as we say in Thailand, you just got to take it easy and replace that, that neediness, replace that lack Replace it with gratitude and appreciation or any of those elevated emotions. Empowering beliefs. I am worthy. I do deserve love. I do deserve success. I do deserve abundance. Abundance is in my DNA. And doing a chant or a mantra or an incantation is one of the quickest ways to overcome these limiting beliefs with these empowering beliefs. Now, can you guess what the final point is here? I think you can. Meditation, meditation, meditation. As you go into your meditation and you're holding that clear intention, so you've relaxed first, you're holding that clear intention, however that works for you, and then you are just surrendering to the process. And you imagine those, uh, you imagine those, uh, that abundance coming to you. You imagine the gratitude that you feel. You imagine all the appreciation. You think about who's going to be in your life, who's going to celebrate with you. And yeah, just practice with that. Okay, Cynthia, how do you act rich? Yeah, so this acting part, you know, you hear people say, fake it till you make it. I haven't thought of a counter statement to say to that because it's not quite correct in 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 how this all works. The way that I okay, so this is what worked for me, Cynthia. See this envelope here? It's a telephone bill, whether it's for Wi-Fi or my mobile phone or whatever it is. Show me the face that most people make when they pay a bill. Kind of looks like this, right? So that is not how rich people act. A rich person might say, thank you, AIS, for providing me this last months of service without having to pay in advance. I truly appreciated being able to talk to anyone who called, to have video calls with my parents in Australia, to be able to look at all of the YouTube videos and Coachology webinars on YouTube for free. Wow, thank you, AIS. I really appreciate. Here, take my money. And you can do the same thing when you go food shopping and you can do the same thing whenever you're paying an existing bill, right? Because remember, your belief system will not believe that you're rich yet. You first must learn to appreciate and have gratitude for what you have right now. When you show that level of appreciation, and I'm talking genuine appreciation, the universe, who's always observing, says, good job. 
Here, let me give you more to be even more appreciative of, right? So it's going to come in increments, guys. Unless you win the lottery, right? You've heard the stories, though. I think it's 80% of people who win the lottery end up being poorer uh, within one year or, or something weird like that. So no, appreciate what you've got right now, right? Appreciation and abundance, it's, it's kind of the same thing, right? So practice your appreciation right now. Arigato! Yeah, and again, you can create a mantra, which you can repeat in your meditation. But surrender is to get out of your own way. Oh, so I've got to tell you this little story, guys. If, if you need to log off, that's cool. But I, I am going to keep talking. So many years ago, Chrissy and I decided we're still living in Bangkok and we decided we wanted a nature escape. I grew up in the bush in Australia with the kangaroos and the wallabies and the snakes and the spiders. And I love nature. And we were searching around Thailand for about three years, which is a pretty long time. But I'm telling you, we searched in every province. We went to Phuket. We went to Samui, Chiang Mai, Chiang Rai, Pai, Kanchanaburi, Pechaburi. You name it, we pretty much visited all around uh, Thailand, especially during lockdown when we couldn't travel anywhere. We did lots of road trips. Anyway, as we were going through this process, we did kind of uh, get clear on what we wanted. So we thought, okay, we definitely want nature. We don't need beach front because we're not really beach people. Bush is nice, but you know what we wanted? We wanted a river view. Anytime we went on holidays and we were near a river, we felt peaceful. We felt serene so we did narrow it down to a piece of river property long story short we eventually found this place we applied for a loan we did not get approved for the loan there was some problem with the deed the land title that meant it was like a blind property there was no legal access to the property so anyone could build a wall or our neighbors could build a wall and then we wouldn't have access to it so we let it go Two years went by and we chose this area. It's called Pechaburi. It's just west of Hua Hin, about three hours south of Bangkok, door to door in three hours. We just let it go. About a year and a half later, we started our search again. A different real estate agent showed us this exact same piece of land and we went, we looked at each other and we were afraid because it was just bare land, no house, no electric, no water, just a piece of jungle. But we looked at each other and we said, I think we should roll the dice. And she said, yep. By this time, we'd saved the money so we didn't need to go to the bank. We negotiated an even better deal than we did one and a half years ago. So we got it cheaper and we took, you know, we, we, we found the courage to say, okay, we'll figure out, how, you know, how are we going to build it? What's it going to look like? Da, 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 da. Once it was all completed, Christy said to me, Luke, I'm sorry I was so resisting to the process. And I said, what do you mean? She said, secretly, I didn't really want to live in the bush. There's, there's no there's no spa or massage. There's no shopping mall. I didn't really want to live here. <laughs> so secretly, and this is half conscious and unconscious, she just wasn't a, a girl from the bush. She's always been a city girl. But it was after we'd been living there, just on weekends and stuff, she says, this is the best decision we ever made. I, I get so relaxed here so quickly. And so here's another little picture you can see around there. That's that's the little plot of land that we bought. It's like a long strip that goes around here. And we've got this beautiful stretch of river. We did a bit of landscaping there to make it flood proof. And just here. So here's our place up here. This is another point of view. My favorite thing to do, I jump in the river here and I go, wee, and I float all the way around. Wee. And I get out here and I walk up through the bush here. I say hello to the neighbor. Hi, somebody come. And then I walk back and then I have a shower. And it's my favorite thing to do. And that's what we just did for three or four weeks while we were down there over the Christmas period. So it came about through the same process, but the stumbling block was there was some resistance to the process. 
So if you are going to co-create and manifest with your life partner, you really need to spend a lot of time on step number two, which is getting that clear intention, making sure that you're fully, fully aligned. Because guys, if you get into alignment, you're going to double your forces of that manifestation. Cool? Now, to manifest your future self, we're, we're going to wrap up now, guys. Just give me five more minutes. New thoughts are going to give you new decisions which lead to new actions and will therefore create your new reality. So it starts right here with new thoughts. Now, again, we've talked about manifestation a lot. And, and remember, here's the three-step process for manifestation. You need to relax. You need to have that clear intention. You need to surrender. But you did hear me mention that magic word, which hangs over all of it. Meditation will help you to relax. Meditation will help you to clarify your intention and or magnify your intention. And the meditation process will help you to surrender, especially with those elevated emotions, such as appreciation and gratitude. So if you are a baby beginner meditated or you have some experience, even if you're a seasoned meditator, I would love for you to join us. This is the program uh, that I'm certified to teach under Dr. Joe Dispenza. He is my mentor. I've spent one-on-one -on -one time with him. I had to train his content to him uh, to get approved to teach this. So here in Bangkok, we have a face-to-face -face training on the 17th and 18th of February, uh, just a few weeks away. Uh, you're going to learn uh, how to create greater resilience and mindfulness within yourself improved communication and alignment with your family and your team members, enhanced collaboration and synergy, increased EQ for yourself, and then empathy for others, reduced stress and anxiety, improved change management, whether you're changing condos, you're changing jobs, or you're working on some kind of project. There are four tools. There's a meditation practice and there's group coaching. After those two days, group coaching over four weeks to fully implement your learnings. So the regular investment, guys, is 29,000 baht. The special webinar investment, because you've either watched today or you've registered, if you're watching the recording, um, the special investment, only 17,500. So there are the dates. If you want to practice this manifestation thing, go ahead and block your calendar to set that clear intention that I want to be with Luke and Coachology on the 17th to 18th of February, and then see what happens, right? Just see what happens as you have that clear intention. Your time will free up. You'll get the funding. You'll get approval from your company to sponsor you. Who knows how the universe will work? So I hope everyone enjoyed. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining me today. Just checking the chat box to see uh, oh, thank you, Ian. Yeah, Ian joined us last year for the Change Your Mind, Create New Results. Um, highly recommended, as he says. Thank you all very, very much. I, I hope you enjoyed tonight's session as much as I did to share it. Um, I will send through an email as well uh, a little bit later tonight with uh, more details about that course, plus a few other training programs that we have coming up in the next two months. I think you might be really interested in our coaching programs and our NLP programs as well. So there'll be some email coming through shortly with details on that. Uh, yes, Fawad, we're seeing you in March for the NLP. Is that right, my friend? Yes, awesome, brother. Look forward to seeing you then. And uh, thank you again, everyone. Thank you for joining me tonight. I wish you well. Stay cool, stay awesome, and keep on manifesting your abundance. Bye for now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.